Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So we are back on Dave's, you might notice I've already taken off the tank um, just because it was already loose and I had to bop it off. So we're going to be working on some more of his bike and I just wanted to, uh, what do you call it, yeah, show you guys a little bit about what's going on up in here. So we got the electrical done um, a while ago. And it's all I just put the clamps back on one here and one here kind of tucks it up underneath the tank I still got to fix the broken wire, which is not a big deal. That's the only wiring on the bike that needs to be done Got to replace the tank the um, tank the spark plug on the wire said tank and um, Kind of just tuck this all back up. We got to get the air box in tonight and um, We got to loosen up the chain So we can move forward to so put the master link into it um and then when I get the bike off the lift, I'll spray down some chain lube and all that. Um, so, so far, once we get the chain hooked up, we can put this cover on the motor and that'll be done. Once we get the air filter done and mount it on there with the boot, which is right here, then we can go ahead and put this side cover on the bike and get that on there. And then let's take a walk on the other side. All right, and on this side, we got to put the clutch cable cover on, which is actually right there. And then that's for the cable adjustment held on two screws, one there, one there, and that can go on. Then on this side, we got to put the battery in, put the cover on here, and then the exhaust system. So that right there will pretty much take care of this whole side of the bike. So one, two, three, four items on this side, basically. And about a half a dozen left on the other. So, nothing too, too crazy. I'm hoping to get this done by the weekend. I really want to get this thing fired up and get this uh, all up and running. So, we're going to see how far we can go tonight with the... Um, I want to get the air box on. That's my priority. Um, to get that air filter assembly on and bolted down. And to get the chain... Um, get the axle moved forward so we can then go ahead and put the uh, chain on. So, and let's get the side cover onto the bike. So, if I put the side cover on tonight, that basically is going to wrap this cover and the other cover there. It's going to wrap up the engine covers and then it's just a matter of exhaust and stupid little stuff. So, anyway, let me get you guys in the stand. But before I do, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, ding, you guys get it. All right, so let me get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a lacking. All right, so we're going to start with the air box because that's kind of a complicated piece. Um, this box has to move back and the oil tank is right in the way. Now, if you guys had watched my video on the Suzuki DS100 that I have, it literally has the same exact tank and has the same exact problem when I had to put the air filter assembly on. The tank is right in the way. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. And uh, let me we'll take off these three bolts here and then the tank is going to come up but I'm not going to let the tank go down because it's still hooked up from the oil line so I'm going to show you guys my tip to do that all right let's just zap these off sorry about that didn't mean to hit you with that okay now the oil tank is loose and I'm going to use a small bungee, which is just basically going to go up around like this. Loop them in like that. Hook one into this ear. This just prevents it from falling down, guys and break in and come and disconnected and all that okay so now i can move this back and as coincident i can move the air filter assembly back okay basically taking a complicated situation and making it non-complicated all right so here is the intake boot right here and it says made in japan if you have this upside down so it'd be the made in Japan will be upside down, but on the other side, that would be installed incorrectly. So the made in Japan part 
with the Suzuki emblem goes straight like that. That's how you can tell if you that's on correctly. And then you have two different size clamps. A big one and a small one. Obviously small one towards the carburetor. And the big one towards the air box. So now, I'm just going to see if I can... Well, I'm going to pop it on and then I'm going to show you. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of push it towards me a little bit. Makes it a little easier to get into. And of course the oil line is in my way, but that's okay. It can easily be moved. You can also, if you... Um, if you want to, if the clamps keep getting in your way and you kind of, your hands are all jumbled, you can actually take both clamps off. You just have to put the big one on after, like first. Okay. That's the nice way of doing it this way. And also, the, uh, there's a lip on it, so it's kind of a little bit of a, a pain in the neck to get on onto the airbox. But you want to put it on the airbox first. Okay, that popped on there. And then I'm going to rotate it until it's straight up, and until the wording is straight. Let me see if I can grab an airbox. I want to show you guys. Okay, here is another Suzuki airbox. Same thing as the TS125 one, but this one right here is for the DS100. Same bike, but if you look, there's a lip right here on the edge. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to overcome that lip. You're trying to expand it over there. It fits inside it nice and tight. So I wanted to show you that because it's kind of complicated to see what I'm doing, actually doing inside here. But um, that's how you do it. And then going over the carburetor is easy. It's just a matter of, you know, it slides on. There's no lip on the carburetor. The carburetor is smooth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my top clamp on, my big clamp on first. Which is still kind of complicated to maneuver. But, um, let's see if I can get that into the right. want to make sure it's straight the first time, you know. Okay, good. Looks good to me right there. Okay, I'll put the front clip on. Not clip, clamp. Okay. And okay. That clamp is on the groove. Then I'll put the small one at the bottom. Okay. Now I'm pushing the whole air box back so I can slide it over the throat of the carburetor. So I'm at right here, and now I'm just trying to maneuver it. Like I said, it's a, it's one of those things that takes a little while to get familiar with and used to. Um, it can be extremely frustrating, but I, I gotta urge you, you must have patience. Must have patience because you're fighting with this. You're fighting with this whole air filter assembly. And you're trying to maneuver it into a way that's very, very tight. You know? And it's going to feel like it wants to go on. Then it's not going to want to go on. And you're going to be fiddling with it. And you can see how I'm even having difficulty with it. it it's complicated. It's not easy. Definitely not an easy task. I'm going on the other side of the carburetor. See if I can pull it on the other side as well. Of course, you don't want to put a screwdriver through the boot. Because then you'll have dirt ingestion. 
It's basically a big game. But once you get it on there, just gonna keep working with it. Take it out of the bottom, then you try to get over the top. It feels like it goes on one side, then it comes off the other, and you're like, what the heck is going on? How come I can't get this boot on there? Just a matter of finagling it, maneuvering it, making sure you can get the whole thing all the way around. Okay. It will go. It just takes a little while. And now I'm on. Okay, and then at the very top there are two screws. Two 10 millimeter screws. They're very small screws. Yeah, just these. And these are here. Go up top. They go right up in here. You can see there's two of them. And those are the two mounting bolts for the, uh, what do you call it, there, the air box. And then that'll be all up and in there. And then you can see how I got the clamp. It's all sitting on here correctly. And there's another one back here. There's a secondary clamp right there for the back part. And it's all the way on. It's just a matter of, like I said, finagling. See right there. The best way to put this on is to have patience. Patience is a virtue. Okay, now tighten up the top one there. Okay, that is on and tight. Then I just gotta tighten up my two clamps. And let's take these clamps off right here for the oil tank. Can you see what I'm working on? No, I can't really see too well. Okay. I'm just going to put you back over there. Okay. And now we'll take my little, um, what you call it there, bungee cord off. I love these little mini bungee cords. They come in handy for um, holding things like this. Because you, you want to limit their movement, you know. And it just sits right like so. Then this right here will get the oil reservoir into place. The air box into place. Whoops. And always start your three bolts before you tighten any of them. Okay. That's all set there. Boom. Done. 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 Okay. The air box is on and tight. The oil reservoir is put back on and tight. And now I have to tighten up the two air filter clamps. And then this portion of the bike right here is done. All right, now I'm going to tighten down my two clamps. It's one.
adds two. Okay, so the air filter is completely on. The air filter box is mounted. The boot with the two clamps, those are on. Everything's done. All the little cable things are all over it. Everything's where it needs to be. This is looking pretty sharp, guys. Pretty sharp. All right, cool. Put the oil line back up that way. Beautiful. Just like that. Shebang. Okay. I'll take that bolt off there. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> I say that. Looks like a bite coming together, huh? Don't you? Alright, now. Let's loosen up that back wheel. Alright, so this part right here is held in with a cotter pin. A, 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 a crown nut. And then here is your adjusters right here. Um, which don't look like they've been off for a very, very long time. So I'm expecting to fight a little bit with it. So we'll take off the cotter pin first. By the way, guys, never reuse a cotter pin. They're cheap enough to buy. And um, once you bend them once, that's it. They're kind of, they're all set, you know. They're junk. After you uh, take them back off. So don't reuse cotter pins. Not good practice. Not good practice at all. These one, this one here is all bent to heck. This one here, I bet you was used one one time over. It's more of a safety thing. You don't want this thing to come off, you know. What are the odds of that loosening up with a, a little uh, little impact gun? Pretty good. Use my Milwaukee M12. I love this thing. Wow. I didn't expect that to happen. Okay. Nice and loose. Under your jam nut first. Wow, I'm impressed. This bike has got no mileage on it, none. Okay, to the other side. Okay, look at that, huh? By hand, this, this bike is so nice. All right, we're gonna try to get the master links to line up. So here's the master link for one side. Here's the other, and you can see how they're slightly off. So I'm going to try rotating the wheel forward, and see if I can't move it forward. If you'll let me. Okay. Wow. Okay. It felt like it went forward. I don't know if it went forward enough. Yep, I'm dead. Okay. So now we have the chain forward enough to put on the master link. The other thing too, we also got to um, tighten up this jam nut right here. That's also loose. I don't want to forget that. Um, so we'll be doing that after I do the chain link. I just want to get the chain on there. So you get your 
master link piece so make sure it's all the way back put this on here should fit all the way in and then here's a controversial thing I've been seeing a lot of is the clip okay let me blow you guys up on this you can see this clip okay now you can see how it snaps onto the back this is like an arrow it always goes in the direction of travel so if you put it this way that's incorrect that means it's they could pop off as it's coming around. You always want the master link retainer to go in the direction of um, travel, okay? Which in this case is this way. Now, I wanna show you guys, a lot of people don't know how to put these clips on. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do them there. Fairly easy to do, because there's a couple of different types. Um, let me go see if I have the other style. Okay, I did have both styles, so I'll show you both styles. This is the top one right here, the factory one. This is my favorite style because this was more robust. The other style is the open style, which I call it. The open, it's open. See how it's open right in the middle? And you can see right here, this big open part is where it fits onto the link. And then it goes into the thin part right up in here where it goes onto the groove on one link and then snaps onto the other. This is okay, but these right here are more common to fail. The best ones are these ones right here. They're a little harder to put on, but they're better. So to put this on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow you right up so you can see this. Yeah, hold on. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so now we're looking at the master link. Right here, this fits on, on the first hole, like so. And it slides back onto the groove. Okay, so let's see if we can. All right, see how that's on there like that? So this part right here is going to slide into the first groove as that one clips on. So these right here are kind of a pain in the neck sometimes to get on, but I use a pair of needle nose or a flat blade screwdriver. Got the flat blade. Sometimes these go on easy. Sometimes they go on a little tough. like that you heard that snap on okay and now it's on both sides so it actually opened up and snapped onto it so what I did was I used the flat blade screwdriver between the two links to start it and then I just used a pair of needle nose on the link and on the back side to snap it in and it's going in the direction of travel which is most important direction of travel so make sure it's going in the right direction Okay, so now the next part is I gotta take my impact gun and zap this down um, so that this right here is all locked in. Okay, all right, so on this one right here, this is your locking ring. Um, I had to flatten down one end of it, but this is the lock washer. This goes on first, just like so. And then on the, on the nut itself, there's a flat side here. And then there's a bevel side, the bevel side goes out, the flat side goes towards the washer. Okay, it's like that. And then 27 millimeter, and just give it to it a little bit. That ain't going anywhere. Once you get that in there, so it's all set. That ain't moving. Then I'm gonna take my trusty old um what do you call it there chisel i use my brass hammer only because it's handy it's right here and that locks it in so that can't back out well looks like we have successfully completed this task locked in locked in the cup is on we did that last video the magneto is in everything's tight that's torque the wires routed in the proper place now what do we need yes that's what we need we need the side cover and a gasket to keep the magneto protected all right so now we're gonna put the Suzuki cover on with the gasket 
But I gotta show you something first. So if you look, there's four bolts. Okay, we'll get you guys in the whole thing here, the whole shot. One, two, three, and four. This one, this one, and this one all take the same size screw. Okay, there are three of them. They're all the same length. The fourth one, the upper little one, takes a slightly smaller one, almost, a, um, I'd say a quarter inch smaller. Okay, so I just wanted to make, make sure you knew about that. Um, it gets confusing when you're trying to put one of these together, and that's the same as the DS100, um, the TS100, the TS125, the 185, all those that use that cover. Um, basically all the same. Okay. So now we have our brand new gasket. And now we're going to put this on. So what I like to do is I like to start off with the smaller screw first. I'll put that in first. And then get onto that gasket. Like so. And I'll start one with my hand on that other corner, if I can. Okay. Yeah, boom. Boom there. Okay, that's good. Okay, now make sure they're all on and good. Done. Okay, so this side right here is pretty much sealed up. This side right here is pretty much sealed up. I do have to lubricate and clean the chain or clean and lubricate the chain. But we're not doing that in this video. We're just getting this side right here done. And we are missing something that goes right here. Goes up and down, changes gears. So let's get that on there as well. Okay. Put the gear shifter on. Um, nope, not yet. There we go. Looks a little better on there, like so. Tighten that down. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm wiggling this back and forth and seeing how much movement I have on the shaft. I shouldn't have any movement. It's easy to over tighten these, but you shouldn't have any movement at all. And if you get movement, then you gotta go a little tighter. I just have no movement. And then just lock it in, just like so. Now, I also notice that this part right here is actually bent slightly, not too much, not too crazy. But uh, I'm going to throw something on there and see if I can't kind of tweak it back a little bit. So, these two right here, oh, maybe not like this, you see what I'm talking about? These two right here should be parallel. I'm just using a socket and an extension onto an extension 
slipped over it to adjust it the way I want. All right, that almost nice and freely. The shifter is on. Everything on this part right here is done. D-O-N-E, done. All right, so what is actually left on this side of the bike? Well, we have the wire to fix up top. We have the chain to clean, lube, and adjust. The exhaust needs to be put back on. The tank needs to be put on. And the uh, that little cover on the side there. So I think we should tackle the um, cover on the other side and completely get the engine completely together and be done with the engine other than the exhaust. on nice and tight okay so this side of the engine is complete from a to zinc everything's on this side everything but the battery and the um side cover for this side so that's the only thing that's not on this side but we can't put that on yet because we also have the exhaust that's going to go on here which is very exhausting to do i'm um, just kidding threw that out there block shot approach okay so guys we are right around the corner from getting this thing all done this thing is looking pristine so we got to do oil we got to do spark plug and then that's all set then uh, what else can we do tonight real quick because i, I kind of want to do one more thing i know what we can do we can get this pesky clutch cable on. That's what we can do. Let's see if we can get that uh, on there. All right. So when it gets like this right here, where you can't push it on and the adjust is all the way in there, I'll show you what you have to do. You have to go on the other side and do it up there. So. We'll um we'll go over there and un and loosen up the other side. Okay, so we're gonna slide up this way here, and here's our adjuster which we left that loose. Remember, that's why we didn't tighten it. So we're gonna loosen that right up as much as we can, and then screw the adjuster nut all the way down. And pop the cable back in. Okay. Just like so, now we'll go back to the front. Okay, now we'll see how much that helps us. Okay, now the clutch is all the way on and way out of adjustment. I can feel it feels good though. Okay, so now we got to make this thing feel pristine. So what are we going to do? I'll show you. Now, when you pull back and the clutch does not engage, this loose sloppiness, this is called free play. Okay, and every clutch needs to have a little bit of free play. Okay, see right here that gap? It's a little too big. We want it to be right about there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all the slack out of the cable. To get the slack out of the cable, we're going to turn it here. See right here? We're not using any tools. We're just using our fingers. 
Okay, and I'm going to turn until I just feel a little bit of tension. Then on the front here, so right there, there's a free play, and then that clutch feels good. That clutch feels real good. And there's a free play right there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to lock it down. Okay. Hold that like that. Put the jam nut down. Just don't crank it, crank it. Just snug it. Okay, make sure the cable's all the way in. Slide the rubber boot over the top. And there we have it. We have a clutch. And I forgot to show you, but I tightened up the side, uh, the jam nut there and pulled the rubber piece over it. Clutch feels awesome. So we have made some serious progress with the skies. Tomorrow night we're gonna put the oil in it. Um we call it the in the in the uh, transmission, get that part all done, get this exhaust put on, and uh Solder up that wire, heat shrink it, put that all on, put that back on. We got to put the tail light back on, and we are just about there, guys. Just about there. And then we can do a first start on this bike and get, well, actually, second start because we already did a first start on it a long time ago when it had its problem. And uh, so there's earlier videos on it, but um, yep, it's uh, coming a long way. So, this thing is sweet. I want to take a moment to say thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you to all my old subscribers. I want to say thank you guys very much for all your support. You guys have been a great crowd. I love the comments. I love the thumbs up and all the uh, support that you give the channel. So, uh, it's because of you that we're doing stuff like this. And uh, hopefully you guys are learning a, a metric ton because there is a lot of information. But, you know, we're doing projects like this and we're getting bikes put back together we're not restoring them what we are doing is going through them and fixing all the little problems with them this one just happened to be crank seals on a, uh, a 125 which is awesome but um i've had this bike here for a while now i want to get this bike out of here get this back to its original owner dave and um so he can enjoy it and then we have so many other bikes we have robert's bike we have elvin's bike and uh those two uh next on dockets and we have brian's what you're going to fit in between there. And um, we, we just have a lot of stuff, guys. A lot of stuff going on. So um, I haven't been doing Two Stroke Tuesdays uh, in a while. So I think we might do a, um, what do you call it, the, a throttle them Thursday or something this week. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So anyway, guys, I want to say once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.